and welcome to this morning's study. It's the last study of uh, morning study of this week. Uh, before we begin, uh, can you join me in a word of prayer? Dear Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, uh, once again for the light that comes from your word as we come together asking for your Holy Spirit to instruct us. And so once again, we ask that you can teach us and that the work that you want to do in our lives, it can be accomplished uh, with our cooperation with you. We know, Lord, that without you, we are nothing. Uh, but we receive strength and power as we connect with, with you. And this helps us to see our need of you and our dependence upon you. That we can reflect your character. We pray for each person studying these truths. And we ask, Lord, that your Holy Spirit can now um, be upon each heart and mind. Help us in our personal study. And be with us here as we study together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, good morning again. So uh, yesterday we had theoretically uh, finished off chapter 11. And um, we're going to look at this last part, which is um, uh, Judges chapter 12, verse 1 to 6, and then verse 7 as well. So, <clears throat> um, so there's a couple of points. I'm not sure exactly where to start with this, but um, so just as a quick review, remember we had taken, so because we have to address the six years, so when we had first drawn out this line, we started on June 22nd, 2014. Now, uh, that was, because uh, today is June 22nd, so just a note that um, that was nine years ago that uh, uh, the message of Ezra 7-9 was presented at that camp meeting in Arkansas. Uh, a lot of things have happened in this movement uh, since that time. And if we go back to the, um, you know, to the June 22nd, 2011, when Jeff receives $165,000, I mean, that's a lot of, of things that have occurred. Yeah. Um, just gonna. Okay. So. So this June 22nd here, we're, we're, we're still, even though we have this other line, we're not saying this other line is incorrect. So we're not choosing between two different lines. Copy this. I just wanted to put this here. So it's on this one, because this one has the June 22nd. And um, so, you know, we have these periods of three years. We have uh, June 22nd, 2011, and three years later, June 22nd, 2014. The date, exactly the center of that is December 21st, 2012, which is that Mayan calendar date. And then with that structure, um, of the 777 chiasm. June 22nd, uh, 2017 is the center of that structure. So that structure is a period of uh, 3,291 days. And then uh, three years after the center of that structure, we have June 22nd, 2020, which is the publication, the ad in the Tennessean that's published the day before, but receives international attention on that date. And, and today is now three years from then. I mean, we don't have it drawn on a line or anything like that. Um, but, you know, we can see these periods of three years uh, symbolizing that. Now, so if we went to this uh, June 22nd, 2014, I mean, obviously, if we talked about six years, technically that would bring us to June 22nd. Uh, in 2020, right? 
Now we don't have June, so we have June 22nd, 2020 marked right here. So technically that's the six years, but we have these two other dates, July 18 and December 6th, uh, completing off that six years. And um, I think it's like 167 days or something from June 22nd to December 6, 2020. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think that's about right, 167 days or 163 days. I can't remember. It's it's yeah, maybe it's 163. I'd have to calculate it again. I know it's one of those. Um, and so, so there's six years that we put here with this uh, uh, reference to that six years comes from chapter 12, verse 7. That's why we put it there. Now, in this next line, which we then, because of this 18 years of darkness, we, we started this line at November 9th, 2019, uh, with a center date of 10, 10, 10. That's October 10th, 2010. And that's based on Jephthah's name. So we've gone through that. Now, there was a question regarding uh, these 18 years of in, in the story of Judges. And that's in chapter 10. So I just want to clear this up because Stephen has some information on that. Um, so in Judges 10, verse 6. It says, the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord and served Balaam and Ashtoreth and the gods of Syria, right? And then it talks about in 10 verse 7, the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel and he sold them into the hands of the Philistines and into the hands of the children of Ammon. And that year, they vexed and oppressed the children of Israel, 18 years. So the question that we had was, after the death, death of Jair, was it going to be some period of time before this 18 years uh, uh, began. So they vexed, that year they vexed and oppressed the children of Israel. 18 years, all the children of Israel were on the other side of Jordan in the land of the Amorites, which is in Gilead. So this 18 years um, ends up being that period from September 11th, um, uh, 2001 to November 9th. 2019. Technically, it's 18 years and two months in, in, in our lives. So we're taking these 18 years as representing that 18 years and two months. That's based on the name of Jephthah, that the Hebrew number, right? So, so Stephen, you said that Ellen White makes a statement that um, even before the death of Jair, that... Um, they had already been worshiping Balaam. Yes. Now, do you know where that's something that they were going? Well, if you just type in JR to Ellen White's. Yeah, so times of the signs of the times, August 11th, 1881. To some extent, during the latter part of Jay Year's reign, and more generally after his death, the Israelites again relapsed into idolatry, right? So what we're saying is that um, uh, that um, if that's the case, then this 18 years is probably beginning at the point where J, J year dies. So they're, they're going to be in idolatry, and when he dies, then they're going to be uh, oppressed and vexed by um, the Philistines, right? And the children of Ammon. Well, I guess it's the Philistines here. The children of Ammon are going to come and fight against them later at the end of that 18 years. Does that make sense to people, what uh, we're saying here? <clears throat> Is it not uh, Ammon being the primarily primary uh, oppressor brought to view? I know what they say to Philistines. Um, well, is is no okay? Um, let me see here. So, so you're saying that 
that it's not the Philistines, it's the children of Ammon that are the oppressors? Because it says, uh, verse 7, And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel, and he sold them into the hands of the Philistines and into the hands of the children of Ammon. So you're saying mm -hmm. that this is primarily the Ammonites? Yeah, so it does mention the Philistines first. Yeah. But, uh, but there's not a lot said concerning uh -huh. the Philistines. It seems to focus more on the Ammonites. Yeah, so maybe it's just some Philistine oppression happens at, at the beginning, and then, then it's more the Ammonites near the end. Is that possible? It's just the Philistines are way over in the west, where the Ammonites are over in the east, where this is happening. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So anyway, the children of Ammon and the Philistines are both going to oppress them. But it says he sold them into the hands of the Philistines. Um, you know, it's, to me, it's always been a weird expression because it, it doesn't literally sell them, right? Uh, but it does mean to sell, like in like a daughter in marriage, right? So it probably means more figuratively than literally. Right? He's not going to literally sell them. Um, uh, so into the hands of the Philistines and the hands of the children of Ammon. So the Ammonites are going to be who they're going to be fighting against at the end of these eight, 18 years. Anyway, that's the main point there. Okay. That makes sense, Stephen? Yeah, yeah, fine. Okay. <clears throat> So, so we have that 18 years. So if we go back to these charts, because what we're trying to sort out. Um, so we have this 18 years. And then you have uh, the six years in which Jephthah is um, going to, to be the judge, right? So it's just a period of six years. Now, Obviously, we're, we use the six years originally as uh, um, this period of time, as you note here. But now we, we just talk about the six years. We're, we haven't marked it as a period of time. Now, if we were, it'd bring us to like 2025. So obviously, we can't be applying the, the six year, years here literally. Um you know, it just wouldn't wouldn't fit into this structure. But here in 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 this structure, it does. Right. So here the six years fits, but the 18 years wouldn't fit. But here the 18 years fits, but the six years doesn't. OK. And, and we're taking that this uh, six years because it's in 12 or seven. Um, and we look at this verse, this reverse verse in, in the book is, is the 252nd verse from the end of the book of Judges. And then um, the reverse sum, that is, if you take uh, the whole sum, the gematria of that verse, and you take the gematria um, I believe that that's what that's for. You get 1629. So, um, and that's that number that Odilio had created or found out, whatever you want to call it. He noticed it through that structure of the mandates. So, <clears throat> so anyway, that's what we have here for this period of time in this study uh, or in this one. But here, we don't. So, I don't know what we do. We could still have the six years there symbolically. And uh, any thoughts on that? Of what, what that six years can mean?
Okay, because I mean, we we can have it there six years. But what does that particularly mean? The six years as a symbol. Anything? I'm um, thinking about the six days of creation, or six days when man was to work. Or... Okay, so sort and of the week. Not... Yeah, so the week, the six, and the seven. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, that kind of makes sense. Um. Now, in this line, of course, we we have we're going we're saying this six years is covering this period from uh, November 9th, two thousand nineteen to December twenty fifth, twenty twenty. Right. So that's a period of eight hundred and fourteen days. Is there any significance? in that period of time itself. You know, the only thing that I can sort of see, but it's not 814, pardon me, it's 412. I don't know who got 814. 412 days. Um, so uh, in 412, it's... Um, I don't really see anything about 412 that I can think of. It's four times 103. 103 is the prime number, of course, the 27th prime number. So I don't know how to to understand that period of time, whether that's the best way to look at that period of time. But we chose this as the arrival of a message. Um, so I don't know. I don't have a good answer. But we're just going to say that symbolically that that's the six years of Jephthah. So the message of Jephthah happens in this period of 412 days. And then we have um, uh, a number of things that we want to address here in the second angel. So we have on June 22nd, 2020, we have the publication in the Tennis Tennessee and going international. Then we have this story with the committee. This is that sort of negotiation. It's correcting the history, uh, the misrepresentations. And the symbol there is the 300, October 30th. And it talks about the 300 years, right? So 10 times 30 is 300. And this is this correction of history that's made. And then Judges 29 to 40 uh, deals with the declaration itself. And this is this vow, the rash vow. Um, and then we have, which I put in at the end of the study, December 25th, 2020.
Now, this is Judges 12, verse 1 to 6, and that, of course, fits really well with this line. So if we go there, Yeah, so the rest of the land is due after six years, so that would refer to the sabbatical rest of the land. I'm just reading the chats here. Uh, all the different six, the 18s in that August 11th, 1881. And Christ healing the hunchback who was bent 18 years comes to my mind. Okay. <clears throat> Now, um, so here in this conflict with Ephraim, right, the men of Ephraim gathered themselves together and went northward and said unto Jephthah, therefore, wherefore passed, passest thou over to fight against the children of Ammon, and didst not call us to go with thee, who will burn thine house upon thee with fire. So we're taking this as relating to the conflict that's happening in FFA. Um, so we put it as 12 verse 7. That's going to be the declaration, um, which makes perfect sense. Um, and so that's Judges 12, 1 to 6. That's going to be December 25th, 2020. So we originally had had that as December 6th. So we might, I, I don't know how we would address that, whether we take this rash vow as because we have that as december 6th but anyway that's how we done it originally we did this as the declaration now we're marking it as december 25th 2020 but maybe that's not the best date to place there so let's let's read this verse one to six and then discuss that so the men of ephraim gathered themselves together and went northward and said unto jephthah wherefore passest thou over to fight against the children of ammon and didst not call us to go with thee, we will burn thine house upon thee with fire. And Jephthah said unto them, I and my people were at great strife with the children of Ammon. And when I called you, ye delivered me not out of their hands. And when I saw that ye delivered me not, I put my life into my hands and passed over against the children of Ammon. And the Lord delivered them into my hand, wherefore they are then are ye come up unto me. Wherefore, then are ye come up unto me this day to fight against me. And Jephthah gathered together all the men of Gilead and fought with Ephraim. And the men of Gilead smote Ephraim because they said, ye Gileadites are fugitives of Ephraim among the Ephraimites and among the Manessites. And the Gileadites took the passages of Jordan before the Ephraimites and it it was so that when those Ephraimites, which were escaped, said, let me go over, that the men of Gilead said unto him, art thou an Ephraimite? If he said nay, then said they unto him, say now Shibboleth. And they said Sibboleth, for they could not frame to pronounce it right. Then they took him and slew him at the passages of Jordan. And there fell at that time of the Ephraimites, 40 and 2,000. Jephthah judged Israel six years, then died Jephthah the Gileadite and was buried in one of the cities of Gilead. So this Shibboleth, um, uh, they can't pronounce it. So we had discussed this before, right? this word. Now, it just means a stream, right? That's probably what they're referring to. So they're trying to get them to say something about uh, a stream. It can also be an ear of grain, a, by analogy, a branch. Um, a flood. So um, when they say sibilet, it just means an ear of grain. And uh, now this, this word, the Hebrew number for it is 7641. Now, what's the significance of 7641? as a number. Okay, so it's uh, Krepikar's uh, constant, right? 
So this number, it, it's not quite because what is Krepikar's constant? What's the actual number? I want to say six, one, seven, four, maybe. I'm not sure, though. Yeah. So um, I always forget which order the numbers are in. I think it's six, one, seven, four. Um, yeah, 6174, Capricar's constant. So it's it's actually C-K-A-P-R-E-K-E-R, K-A-R, Capricar's constant. Uh, so he's a mathematician who came up with this number. And this number is just that if you take uh, any four numbers, except the number 1111, um, and you uh, put them in order from highest to lowest, and then you uh, subtract that from lowest to highest, within seven um, steps, you'll end up coming with the number uh, 6174. So this, what is a shibboleth? What is, what is, is it metaphorically? What is this? word come to me so a shibboleth is a custom principle or belief distinguishing a particular class or group of people, especially a long-standing one regarding an outmoded, uh, regarded as outmoded or no longer important. Right? So why is this this word shibboleth that's what it's come to mean right in our history in our time that we live if so talk, somebody talk uses the word shibboleth usually pronounced shibboleth but in hebrew it's shibboleth um and it has this number seven six four one so it has this number that we've recognized as a symbol and and this is the the symbol that allows us to, or, or gives witness to uh, the iteration of numbers in different orders uh, to represent something. So, so here we have these numbers reversed, um, you know, or in a different order than, than crap, uh, Capricar's constant, but they're the same four digits, which is a principle of, of that constant. And this is from highest to lowest, right? Um, so I'll just show you this here. Um, so just to see, so when we put the numbers from highest to lowest and we subtract from lowest to highest, we will get these four digits, which is Capricar's constant, right? So, so this number here being this shibboleth, uh, what does it mean symbolically within this movement? What is this, this test that, it, that occurs within this movement? Sort of a test within quotation marks. Because they're using it as a test to see whether somebody's an Ephraimite or a Gileadite.
So people are often thinking, what's that? What am I thinking? thinking about the well, about the symbolic just as numbers? Yeah. The test. Right. So because when we look at how the church would look at, let's say, Miller's rules, are Miller's rules outdated? According to the church. Yes, according to the church, it is. Right. So it's often some of our beliefs are referred to as shibboleths, right, in in Adventism. And, and there's, uh, um, uh, there's a famous quote, and I can't find it, um, that was made, uh, and I can't remember. I can't remember if it was Ford that made it or somebody like that. Uh, talking about the investigative judgment, some, some kind of shiblet. Anyway, the point is um, that when we look at this shibboleth, uh, one of the things that we, we have done with it is we've taken this uh, Judges 12, verse 6, and we said, well, that's December 6th, Right. So this definitely fits with the declaration being December 6th. So I don't think that we can just move that over, right? So, you know, we can't put December 25th here. You know, we have to put December 6th here is all I'm trying to say. So that's the shibboleth. Or maybe we, we move this all over to here. We put December 7th here at the end of the six years. So we could take this whole, this whole story, we could do this, but then, you know, we don't really have that uh, rash vow in here. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, or you can't see what I'm doing even. Okay. <clears throat> so we have this shibboleth, right? That shibboleth is 12 verse six. And so 12 verse six must go with December 6th. And it's also connected to this crappy cars constant. Which is, I always forget the order, 6174 is what it should be. Six point seven four. Okay, so whether, and, and it seems to me that, well, if we're going to take this whole story of Ephraim, this needs to be here, right? And we have the October 30th, 2020 committee here based upon this. So we don't have a place for the rash vow in here in between this October 30th date and December 6th. Right. So that is, we have it, we don't have, because originally we had put this committee over here with these verses. So somehow. That, I'm sorry, that word in, that word shibboleth. Yeah. It's got two, it's got two Hebrew numbers to them. One is 540, five, I mean, 54, yeah, because no, one, one is, yeah, so the one is Sibylette where they, they substitute the shin that is, um, so if you see this here, here Shibboleth and Sibylette. Yeah. Yeah, so Shibboleth is um, the proper way that the word is supposed to be, right? So let's just go here. Oh, okay. <clears throat> that's the word they ask them to say, and that starts with the letter shin. That's the last uh, letter of the Hebrew alphabet. But they okay. can't pronounce the shin. They can't, they can't uh, make the SH sound. They can only make the S sound, which is uh, a samach. 
right? So, so this one is spelled with a samic, right? Okay. It, it looks kind of like a, a zero sort of shape. It's just kind of a circle, the samic. And, and so that word does mean an ear of grain, where shibboleth can mean that. So the 5451 five, um, as a number uh, is just the reason, the long the long 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 reason long. I was asking is because it's only got it's only got a small definition for that um five four five one number. It's only got like an ear of grain. The other one's got a large like ear of grain, a stream, branch. Yeah, yeah. That's because shibboleth means a stream mostly. But but it can be a substitute, I guess. But but anyway, they're two different words technically. So you know, in, we could have the same thing in English if somebody asked you to pronounce a word and you couldn't pronounce one of the letters, it would sound like another word, right? All right, I see the H is missing out of that other word. Okay. Yeah. 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 Like, you know, I mean, some people call me Theodore, right? All right. Uh, I think Colin calls me Theodore. You know, he doesn't say Theodore. You know, it's, it, he can't really pronounce the TH sound. I think he's one of them that can't do that. I could be wrong, but call him. But anyway, there are people that can't pronounce my name properly. I know the guy who baptized me when I was uh, 19 years old. He he, uh, you know, called my name Theodore. You know, he was Ukrainian. I don't know why Ukrainians can't pronounce th, but um, but anyway, you know. I'll answer. I'm sorry to distract you. I just wanted to, just wanted to know why. Uh, no, it's a good point. So we discussed this word before, this shibboleth, and and we can see that it refers to something outdated, right? And and what we're saying is that with the December 6, 2020 declaration, that they're they're basically rejecting Miller's rules. They're 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 making a shibboleth, or they're they're you know. They're not passing the test of the shibboleth, right? So, so they're rejecting the past. That's basically the best way to look at it. And it's this symbol of Capricar's constant that is there in that word on December December sixth, Judges twelve six, which is the symbolic use of numbers. And so. So I think it's significant that Shibboleth has those four digits, Crap, Capricar's constant with the four digits from highest to lowest. And if you take them from lowest to highest and you subtract that, you will get uh, 6174, right? So to me, that's significant. I don't, I don't think we could, um, you know, Ignore that symbol there. Um, see here. Um, just checking something here with these numbers. So, so there's something interesting here um, uh, with this, with this uh, shibboleth and the sibboleth. So if you subtract uh, from uh, Cap Capricar's constant, you subtract uh, 5, 4, 5, 1, you get the number 7, 2, 3, which has the digits of 273. And if you take five, um, five, four, five, one, the number itself, it's the number, uh, it's, uh, if you divide it by 23, you get 237, which also has those, that iteration. So one of the things about this, then we can say about this number, this, this shibboleth, because this, this relates to the message to the Levites. 
I mean, that is the line at the beginning, if we're starting this line with November 19th, right, that's when the 273 is going to be presented. And here with this shibboleth at the end, you have symbols that can produce this 273. Um. <coughs> so, uh, let me see here, how do we do this? I'm sorry, Collins. Ain't that the number I said? It's at um, 723 um, BC. Wouldn't that be the same? Um, yep, yep. That symbol of 723 BC that starts the 2520. Yeah. So, so somehow we have to sort this this out. I mean, we have to figure out a few things. But I think one thing we can say is that Judges 12, verse 1 to 6 addresses December 6, 2020. And it makes the most sense to put, put that at the end, that is the third angel arriving. That, that's the way I would look at it. Um. Now, the thing about uh, Capricar's constant itself, so that is if we take that shibboleth, it's 7641. But we know that if we arrange the numbers in the opposite order, 1467, and subtract it, we get 6174, which is Capricar's constant. Now, Capricar's constant is... 7 times 7 times 7 times uh, uh, 18, I believe. So how does that relate to our line? Here, I'll... I'll show you this here, just what I mean. Uh, so this is number empire. We managed to get it that we don't see these. Uh... Hey, Theodore, that box you had before there was just black. You didn't have nothing in it. Yeah, I understand that. I was just doing a calculation, and you didn't see it. So it just ends up making a black uh, box on your screen because I hadn't, I hadn't shared it. But anyway. I was just doing a calculation. So anyway, now you can see that. See the properties of the number 6174. Six, that is, that's Capricar's constant. And um, you can see some of the numbers there. We have that 1029, which is a number we looked at before. And what's 1029? That's 252 plus 777, right? We have that span of time in our lines. Um, but so, so Iran is putting this out clearly that 7 times 7 times 7 times 6 plus 6 plus 6 is um, this number that we have there, 6174, right? So, but the thing that we see here is we also have 18 plus 7 times 7 times 7. <clears throat> right? So 18 times 7 times, and we have the 18 years already in this line. So this shibboleth being December 6th, this, I mean, you, you can see hopefully how all these fit, fit together. 
And we also have that this number is divisible by 126, uh, by 343, by 441. So these are all numbers that we have within our structure. Okay. So, so I think those are pretty significant numbers. So if we go back here then to our, our diagram and you have to do here is the Hebrew number was seven. What was the Hebrew number? Seven, six, one, four, or four, one, part because it goes in descending order, uh, which is what you do when you do the when you use Capricar's constant. So another thing we can do here is just simply go um, this minus. number <clears throat> and we can also just say that this is seven times seven times seven times six plus six plus six Okay, so it's a lot of explanation there in that shibboleth. But we can see then, now, whether we're putting that first there, um, I mean, we could put this whole thing of this committee, but is there some date, I guess that's the question, that we can place before October 3rd, 2020, and December 6th, 2020? that would line up with this rash vow. Now, we have these events that, that intervene. So on October 30th, this committee meets, that's for a weekend, what they call the convocation, right? Um, now Dwight's gonna get there, he's, he's not here right now at the study, but he's talked about this before he gets there. At, for this meeting on October 30, 30th, they're going to have a meeting that day. Whether it gets there that day, I don't know. But they have the meeting that day. And they have this weekend meeting of this committee. People are called to convene. So I guess that's a convocation. But it's not a general uh, convocation. That is, there's a committee set up to make a decision regarding July 18th. So you're going to have this committee set up, and it's basically um, Dwight, as he talked about yesterday, is that when he got there, that this was really to address me as a problem, that I'm going to become the scapegoat of, uh, of this situation. Now, um, we're going to have to change some of these things here, too, if we're going to, going to look at this, this line. Uh, but anyway, we have, um, uh, you know, this 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 committee set up. Now they it's really going to be a foregone conclusion, right? They they're not going to really address uh, these issues, right? They're they they just going to rubber stamp a decision. So they're not when they set this up, they set up different places. 
in the world that are supposed to examine these papers. Now, Canada is not one of them. That is, they just say North, there's a North America committee, which doesn't include anybody from Canada, doesn't include me. I'm not part of this committee to study and give a report or anything. Um, they basically handpick the people that are going to give the report that they want. Now, Dwight doesn't end up having any part in the December 6, 2020 declaration. He doesn't know that they're going to issue it. He, they haven't consulted him, even though I believe he was the head of this committee on a, that they had on that weekend. He chaired it. Um, uh, but in the end, he's not notified. So we have all this sort of secretive uh, things that occur behind the scenes that come out with this uh, declaration. Now, you know, if we put the declaration here, right, on December 6, 2020, right, I mean, if we put it here, so that's going to be here instead of where we had it, then this 187 days wouldn't apply because we wouldn't have December 25th, 2020 here, right? So it doesn't matter. I mean, the 187 days still exists. We have it on other lines. But I would tend to think that we need to put this December 6th, 2020 declaration here, right? It means we would just get rid of this. Okay. And so what would we put in between here? And, and even with the December to 6 declaration, I mean, we have uh, Daniel Vanderhorst um, on the on December 5th, he's going to uh, be shut down while he's giving his personal testimony. Um, December 4th, we're going to have uh, Derek Williams has a letter that he sends out um, through WhatsApp, um, which is a very good letter. Um, so I, I take those three days as really important, the December 4th, 5th, and 6th. But Judges 20, uh, um, 11, verse 29 to 40, this is going to be this uh, rash vow, Jephthah's rash vow. And how do we fit that in? How do we fit, um, how do we fit these in these lines? It's his tragic vow, I guess. So where does this fit in this line? Right, this is, you know, we talked a bit about this. Now, the thing about it, the daughters of Israel went yearly to lament the daughter of Jephthah, the Gileadite, four days in a year. Now, now this is a anniversary. Now, it says um, literally in Hebrew that the daughters of Israel went day by day to lament the daughter of Gileadite. Jephthah the Gileadite, four days in a year. Um, so obviously, that's just the Hebrew expression, day to day, yom to yom. And let's see over here. From time to time, the daughters of Israel go to talk to the daughter of Jephthah the Gileadite, four days in a year, is what um, Young's literal translation. So he takes the view that she's not killed. which tends to be my view, um, unless I had a really strong reason to believe that he's that she's actually killed. I believe that she just uh, mourns her virginity, not her death. 
Um, so what do we do with this tragic vow? How do we place this? Because there's a lot of symbols in this, this whole story. Right, so this is going to be basically uh, the battle. He's going to make this vow. He's going to be victorious. And then when he comes home, his daughter's going to come out to meet him. And he's made this vow that he would offer whatsoever came out to meet him as a sacrifice, not expecting his daughter, expecting some animal. Um, right, she's his only child. Is there anything we can do with this story? And place it on these lines. And it's pretty clear the 12 to 27 part. I don't know why we don't have verse 28 in there. Definitely 12 to 6 is going to be, um, especially dealing with verse 6, is going to be uh, December 6th. It's the, it fits perfectly. So what do we do with this? I don't have an answer to it. Because it's, it's Jephthah's tragic vow. It's going to cause him to have to sacrifice his daughter. And, and what would the daughter... What would the daughter represent? And this is Jephthah. Jephthah is the message of July 18th, making a tragic vow, right? So this message makes a vow that causes him to sacrifice his daughter. Because... <clears throat> Yeah, so, I mean, I would think that this would relate more to July 18, right? So many expected, this is in the chat, Angela wrote, many expected July 18 to be an attack on Nashville, a beast sacrifice, but we're very dismayed to later find FFA, Jeff, does daughter to be sacrificed, ended. Uh, Jeff had said that no matter the outcome of July 18, FFA was over. So... So I think that this daughter must in some way refer to the end of FFA, right? So I th think Angela has the right idea here. But it's placed um, here. So, so there's something to do that has to do with this tragic vow. And, and maybe it's just referring back to July 18. Um, but then it has to refer to something here in this history. I mean, maybe it just refers to this history between these two events. From October 30th to December 6th. That this is this tragic vow. This is being demonstrated here. Now, you know, we have the October 30th, the committee, right? So that makes sense to place with the study that we did from verses 12 to 27. That seems to fit. But the tragic vow itself has to fit in here some way, somewhere in between. So, so is it just this, this span of time being represented, not a specific date? Okay. 
Okay. So the span of time here is 37 days. Does that mean anything? Well, from the birth of Christ to the end of the 490 was 37 years. Yeah. I know we have 37 uh, and 73, but yeah, go on. I think the number 10, 10, 10 that you had mentioned, uh, if you have it, if you divide 37 or 370 into it, I think it produces the number 273. Okay. Um, so you're saying the number 37 divided by 2? No. Or 370? Divide 10. Yes. Okay. Explain it again. Okay. Um, You mentioned the number 10, 10, 10. Yeah. You divide, divide that by 273. Oh, hold on. And you get 370. Okay, I see what you're saying. Or, or 37 gives you 2730. Okay. So if I t divide 10, 10, 10 by 37? 37. Mm -hmm. So if I do that, I get 2730. Okay. Yeah. And that's uh, takes you to 2019. Remember, um, I think from 723? Yeah. From, so what Stephen is saying, from 723 BC, right? Plus mm -hmm. um, two, uh, pardon me. So 723 BC, if I go back, go forward uh, 2,730 years. That brings me to November 9th, right? Is that correct? Or maybe it's, uh, maybe it's 742. 742 BC minus 2730. No, that brings me to 1989. Right? Not. That brings me to 1989, November 9th, 1989. Right. Okay, yes, that was the. Yeah, that's right. It's the 2760 brings you to 2019. Right. Because you had the 273 on the boat plus the three others. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Nice, so 1989. Okay. Okay. So anyway, we have these 37 days. Now we mark the beginning of that convocation where the committee meets, right? I mean, obviously it's going to meet, I believe, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, and, you know, Dwight could give us more of an update of exactly his experience at uh, the, that meeting. But the basic idea is that they're, they want to make me a scapegoat. They don't want to take responsibility for their own decisions, right? They want me to blame for uh, July 18th for the failure. Um, and so we could say that that 37 days just is that period of time that we have Jephthah's 
tragic vow, but we don't have any specific event that we could place. There are some events that happen. We know that uh, Toby is going to give a sermon, um, basically eight days prior to December 6th on the Sabbath, that they're going to reject his, his call. He's going to make a call for them to, uh, for everybody on both sides of this issue to become Christ-like. Now, December 6th and October 30th, uh, Angela has a comment here, I believe. It's Ar Iran has a comment. December 6th and October 30th have the biblical date, the 20th day of the ninth month, and the French uh, second month, ninth day, the biblical 813 and Mayan uh, 817. So, so December 6th and October 30th. So these two different dates. Um, so the first one, uh, let me see. So the first one, December 6th, is the 20th day of the ninth month, and the French, the ninth day of the second month. Is that correct? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, but those aren't on the same date. I think the French right. is on the December 6th. Okay, so let, well, let me look at this here. Um, okay, so we want to go back to 2020, and we're going to look at October 30th. So October 30th is the 13th day of the eighth month, right? That's the idea here. So that's Palmoni. It's, um, it's going to be uh, the second month and the ninth day on the French calendar. So it's got this symbol of the 290. Now, the symbol there the 20th day of the ninth month, that symbol relates to this call to repentance where they come to Jerusalem to repent of their marriage with the strange wives, right? And that's that three-day call to repentance. And that relates to, um, I relate that to December 4th to 6th. Those three days relate to that period of time. Um and then we have um, um, and in that we also related to Nehemiah to the 52 days, which three of which are him viewing the situation with the city and 49 of them building the walls. That's how we've understood it. So the 49 and the 52 and the three days come together. Now, uh, 37 days is five weeks and two days. So you get that 52 symbol as well between these this period of time. Now, if we go then, so we go. So when we go to December 6th, we can see the 20th day of the ninth month symbol. And so we're tying that symbol together with the French one. We also have in the Mayan calendar, we have 718. If you read those last three digits, that's July 18, right? And of course, we know it's also 126, December 6th. Um, and it's 28th day, day of the ninth month on the rabbinic calendar as well. <clears throat> so... So those are the those are the symbols that are there. So definitely these two dates are connected. Now, if we go to um, the date in which uh, Toby is going to present, I believe that's November twenty eighth. He does a, a presentation. Um, you know, that's a date in between. Whether that's significant, whether we need to find some date, or whether we just simply 
say that there's this span of time that's represented between these two dates. I sort of like the idea of the span of time being the significant point. But the question is, how do we, can we see that there's a rash vow that's being done in that history? I guess, it, you know, this tragic vow. Is this a tragic vow that's going to end up in the loss of the daughter of Jephthah? <clears throat> Do we have any other symbols that we can attach to this? We're just going to say the tragic bow is there. <clears throat> Five weeks plus two days. <clears throat> Do we just take this and make this uh, December 25th, 2020? Or do we put some other, um, other date here as the fourth angel arriving? You know, are we just going to ignore all this part of this in this line? You have a symbol of 923 days to December 6. Um, 923 from where? From today. Okay, so, so since December 6, 2020, um, it's, yeah, so it's 900 and 22 days to today or 23 uh, it says 923 here okay let me see yeah so i have more than that actually because sometimes you have to refresh that it depends which day you started it so if we go from today, it's 9.28. Okay, yeah, maybe mine wasn't updated. Yeah. So it's 928 days. Not sure what 9.28 would mean. Don't see any significance in 928 that's readily available. Um, so I don't know if that's significant. I would say that probably it's not. <clears throat> now it you now the six years. So the six years date um, that we have, I mean, we get to this shibboleth, we get to this conflict with Ephraim. And we're saying that Ephraim is representative of the movement that's resistant, the part of the movement that's resistant to this message, because there's an aspect of this movement that always complains that they weren't invited, that they, um, uh, you know, they, they have these problems all the time. So Ephraim symbolizes that. <clears throat> okay. 
so we have this test, December 6, 2020. I think Shibboleth definitely fits there. It's this, this word that they can't pronounce or frame, which would have to do to the understanding of this message of chronology. Um, the 37 days, I mean, we have it there. It's five, month, five weeks and two days. So it's got a 52 symbol, which we already connected to December 6th. So I'm just going to put here. Oops, I just capitalized my numbers. Five weeks, two days. That's it, 52 days. <clears throat> So then as far as this last part, dealing with the six years, originally we had had the six years going from 2014 to 2020, and we put the December 5th there. Now, one of the symbols, though, that, that we need to still address is this mourning of Jephthah. So... So this tragic vow, see, part of the problem with this tragic vow is, I mean, to me, it re represents this whole period from July 18th all the way through, and then we get this mourning period, and it's going to be mourning on this anniversary date. So uh, I'm going to put, so, so one of the th things we have here is we have June 22nd. Today's June 22nd, right? This is this anniversary. So we got June 22nd, 2011, 2014, 2017, 2020. And we have this one, 6, 22, 23. We just we'll simply say this is an anniversary. Right. So this this represents um, this is the morning of Jephthah. Right. So somehow we need to fit this into this line. Um, so we have the 37 days of the tragic vow, but in some ways, the tragic vow um, really spans. Um, you know, I mean, this would fit better in with this line. Right. Because this one's going to start on June 14th. So this is that anniversary. So we're looking at this here at this time. So we're going to have to sort this out a little bit more just to understand what, what's being represented here. You know, in a, in a sense, we could almost say that this tragic vow, I mean, is a line in and of itself that goes back to this history of, you know, June 22nd. So the tragic vow, for some reason, is, is representing June 22nd. It can, it can go back to the Tennessean. Um, it can go, but, but anyway, the point is it's an anniversary of mourning. So I'm just going to put here that this is June 22nd, 2023. Now in this case, uh, you know, we, we have, I haven't looked at where this fits in with these other lines as far as spans of time. But um,
So if we go back, uh, so if we go back six years from now, that's going to bring us to the center of that chiasm. A seven 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 chiasm, and it's uh, two thousand one hundred and ninety days from today. June twenty second, twenty three, and. So that's going to be six years. Two thousand one hundred ninety one days. Okay. So we're going to have to try to address that. I don't know. I don't know the, an that, the answer to that. But if we put that here, um, if we go back to November 9th, so I need to do that. I know you're not seeing what I'm doing here, but I'm just putting these dates in here and looking at the spans of time in the calendar converter. Um, so from the center of that chiasm, so that when you start with, um, you know, June 22nd, 2011 to June 22nd, 2014, the center date between those is the start of the 777 chiasm, right? December 21st, 2012. Um, so the center of that chiasm is June 22nd, 2017. And that's 880 days prior to uh, January or November 19th, 2019. And that's because um, you're going to have that 770 days prior to, or 777 days prior to, which is, um, I don't know what I'm doing. September 23rd, 2017 is part of that line. Uh, oh, that's what I did wrong. Never mind, I got this wrong. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so it's gonna be 870 days from, G from the center um 93 days from june 22nd to september 23rd 2017 and 777 days to november 9th and from november 9th it's 1321 days to today so that's um 1321 that's the 216th prime Okay, so that's probably significant. So if we go between these days, it's 1,321 days. Okay. So that's from the start of this line to the fourth angel arriving. So that's how we're, we're doing this. So we're at June 22nd. We're at a way mark that is the fourth angel arriving. And that is the 216th prime number, right? So 216 is six times six times six. Does that make sense? People accept that as valid. 
So 1,321 days. <clears throat> now, if we're saying that the fourth angel is arriving today, uh, what does that mean? I mean, this is an acknowledgement of this history, but we've looked at this history before, but we're just saying June 22nd today, we're marking this. Um, now we say it's, it's so you would end up here with this six years because this story of, of Jetha is going to relate to um, to this date as well. Any thoughts on this? As I said yesterday, the announcement of the third angel's message, fellowship, omitting your link, committee meeting, 10, 30, 20, would add to 12, 6, 20. Okay, I don't understand what you're saying, Angela. So there's a comment in the chat. Uh, I was just uh, paralleling what happened on February 16th of last year to what happened on October 30th and, 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 and December 6th of 2020. And they decided to drop you entirely from well, that's being valid, a valid teacher. Right. Drop all, all, all the prophecies that rely on time. Right. So there's a rejection of time. Okay. Now, if we go from the end of November 9th to the beginning of June 22nd, it's 1,320 days, right? And can we then relate to this symbolically to six years? So we're going to go over here to the fourth angel arriving. And maybe what we could do, maybe, maybe a better way to look at it is like this. I'm going to put this between here. I'm going to move this over here. I'm going to put this 37 days in between here. All right, so I'm just going to do this. Like that. I know it looks terrible. Um, and I'm going to move this over here. So this is just not going to fit in here. I'm going to move this up here. And I know I have the symbol here, June 22nd, um, but I'm going to get rid of this out of here. We're just going to say this 37 days here uh, relates to this. Okay. And that's the period of the tragic vow. That's Judges 11, verse 29 to 40. Um, we end up with the Shibboleth here on the 6th. And then we're going to move this to here. I'm going to move this over to here. And 
this is 220 times 6. So I'll use that. Do 20 times 6. So can we take 220 to represent this period of time? I know we're going a bit over time here. So if we just take, so we have the 216, which is 6 times 6 times 6. But we also have um, the 1321. If we go as 1320 days, that's 220 times six. So that would relate to the same period of time as above. Obviously, it's just I'm going to take that as the six years. I could put it all up in the top here. Maybe I'll do it that way. To 20 times six. It's and you can like, see in. Yeah. It's like June 22. Yeah, it's like June 22, exactly. <clears throat> so does that make June 22, this 6 times 220, which is like June 22, being the representative of the six years, which is in 12 verse 7? Um, and it's 321 days, one count, which is 6 times 6 times 6 prime, right? Or 320 days, that would just be counting from the end of November 9th, 2019. 320 days, which is 220 times 6. Now, if you also take 321, so just a note here. Um, so I'll show you this, because this is interesting. <clears throat> So if you go 1321 and you divide it by 6, you're going to get the 220. But you're going to get a decimal. And what is this decimal? 166? Six, six. 6 is F, 1 is A. That's FFA backwards. FFA, yeah. Okay. So... So this is significant, right? We're, we're taking today as a date. We're saying it's the third angel arriving. And it's a message regarding FFA. And I think it ties together this line nicely. Okay. I'm going to put this up here. Because I think that goes nicely there. <clears throat> so it, it helps us with this November 9th date. But we can also say that this June 22nd, uh, where we started the line above there, when we did the line the first time, I think it's still significant to these lines. But this one much more specifically refers to today as this period of six years from November 9th. So today is from the end of November 9th, 220 times six days. If we include November 9th, it's 220 times six plus a decimal 166, et cetera. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense to people. We know six is the number of a man, of humanity trying to reform or restore itself, symbolized by 220. I don't know if I would take it that way. I, just because you have the number six, it's not just the number of a man. It's also the six days of the working week, as we talked about. So you got the 6,000 years of sin. So when we have a restoration, it occurs um, in connection with, you know, 6,000 years at the end. So I don't know. I don't know what it means exactly. But we're going to leave it there as, uh, at this point. So sorry about going over time. Okay, let's close with prayer. Dear Father in heaven, 
thank you for the study here this morning and for the light that you've given us. Help us to continue to study your word and to understand the things that you've shown us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.